is Greg Michelle, Executive Director of MEMA. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, good morning, sir. Doing good. Thank you. Try, trying to inject a little humor here and there uh, in the life of quarantine America, but uh, where what's what's the news this morning as far as uh, where we stand now? When will we have some new numbers this morning? Well, uh, Mississippi Department of Health should be uh, posting those numbers out today. Uh, typically, they go out you know by eleven o'clock. Yeah. Um, and uh, and obviously, uh, you know, I'll wait and let let them uh, post those new numbers today. Uh, as Dr. Dobbs, you know, has has consistently said, you know, we can expect those cases, um, you know, to increase. Uh, and it certainly is scary to see the number of deaths rise, uh, the number of cases rise as we reach, uh, you know, what we've been talking about that that peak curve in in um, in our cases here in Mississippi. So, you know, it's alarming, but uh, uh, you know, it certainly was anticipated given the extreme nature of this virus. Greg, when you start looking at some of the counties there, and it's on the map, so you can look at the counties and see which ones have these highest uh, rates or incidences. Well, when you still look at that, is there extra attention put on there? I, I, I know when you guys plan logistically where you need to be the most, but you start looking at uh, some of the southern counties and, of course, the Soto County, and I think up in where, Bolivar County in that area, or is it Cahoma County, maybe Bolivar County, there are some uh, high, higher incidences or rates of uh of confirmations. Yes, yes, we and, and we do prioritize, uh, you know, the PPE, which has been the hot topic not only mm-hmm. in Mississippi but you know nationwide, and the shortage of that. And uh, and when we're looking at how we ration that PPE, PPE out, we obviously, you know, the priority is going to go to those facilities, whether they be healthcare facilities, long-term care facilities that have COVID patients uh, that are taking care of COVID patients. Obviously, we've got to ensure that they. Uh, the, the PPE is prioritized appropriately. And, and the same goes with Mr. Department of Health. Uh, you know, they're the lead agency. We follow their their lead as far as where these cases are, uh, where the testing is done, where the epi teams go in to do the, basically to do the, the forensics analysis on, you know, uh, how is it spreading? Is it spreading uh, Is it spreading in long-term care facilities? Is it, is it, is it communicable spreading, uh, as is the case that we, we, you know, we've been looking at in Moss, in Moss Point? Um and that's the reason why it's so important, in particular in those cases, that the shelter at home is adhered to uh, at all possible. Absolutely. Yes, we can prioritize that in those areas. I asked uh, Representative Becky Curry this morning and also the speaker, both on with me, uh, has anybody heard a number of how many people are actually occupying the beds in our hospitals across the state? Have you heard that number? With the, those numbers, we do. We, we we balance those numbers every day. We've got a we've got you know there are probably two or three different groups that are looking at those numbers daily mm-hmm. and trying to project. It's a moving target. They change daily as as patients are are, are moved in and out. Um, and again, I don't want I don't want to speak with respect to those numbers and get out ahead of making any speculation. Bishop Department help, but we're looking at the numbers. Uh, we're going to be talking about those numbers again here in about thirty minutes at, at my executive staff meeting. And uh, as the governor addressed yesterday, you know, we're, we're planning, trying to stay, uh, you know, a couple steps ahead of what those projections are. We talked yesterday about the bed space expansion that we're looking to put at Camp Shelby um, in hopes that we never have to use them. But we want to make sure that we have those beds available should, you know, should we get the spike in the cases that worst case scenario would project. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure that we have places to put folks. Did the governor say, or did I read somewhere, that we had about 300 plus uh, right now, about 300 more beds than we need? Uh, well, I think what, you know, not that we need uh, 300 plus more beds that we're, that we are, going to make available should we need them should we need them? Okay. Uh, and, and again that was based off of one of the higher projection models which i have always said whether we're planning from a disaster or planning for this this you know this pandemic response i'm, I'm trying to plan a worst case so those numbers are numbers uh that we're using uh, in a worst case scenario that we need would need bed space expansion outside of a routine health care facility but as far as you know as executive director of mema greg michelle as far as you know Everybody who needs a ventilator is getting one as we speak. Yes, that is that is a true statement. Yes, and, wanna, and we ha- you know. and we and the ventilator issue. I don't I don't want I don't want to interrupt you and stop you, mm-hmm. but you know the ventilator issue is, is again is a, just like PP is a very sensitive issue, uh, and you saw where we had or where the Mississippi Department of Health brought forward the uh, the emergency or the battery powered uh, ventilators that are typically used to transport a patient from a healthcare facility that may be without power to another. 
we can have many of those converted about 500 to AC power so they could be plugged into a wall. Uh, those are not typically what you would find in a hospital if you went into any of our your major healthcare facilities. That's not what you'd be using, but they will suffice uh, in a situation like this. Uh, so there are, to re- reiterate, there are. there's no one right now that currently needs a yeah. ventilator that does Th- not these, one. Greg, these are the ones that were, were adapted by Mississippi State University? Uh, that's correct, yes. Are they in use now? They are in the marketplace? They are being uh, put in the hospitals distributed? But, but they are, and, uh, some, you know, uh, as hospitals need those, uh, and we're in, in a particular situation, uh, mm-hmm. I know Mississippi Department of Health, much like my field service uh, area coordinators, they have the same thing on Department of Health. They actually have a number of those in their vehicles uh, and ready to hot shot those should you need to, and we've transported a number of those. They've transported a number of those throughout the last few days, uh, making sure that they're made available. And, and, and I cannot attest that they were, they were placed there to be used, but they've certainly been put out there as backups for these hospitals should they need them. Well, I got my uh, order in for Lowe's to deliver some water hoses and things uh, as far as the, the gentleman at the UMMC who made his homemade uh, ventilator, the doctor. So right. I, I, I said, man, yeah, count on the people in Mississippi to get very, very creative. And I thought that was pretty darn good. Uh, and, I, and I think he knows and he, uh, or he stated that this was not a long-term use. Uh, and but in the last analysis, it did work, and I thought that was pretty creative. That's pretty creative, and he's going on my, on my website that the governor mentioned yesterday. We need to get we need to get him get him registered in uh, in my business business emergency <laughs> operation uh, center. That's exactly right. I was my first thought was somebody like Tim the Two Man Taylor might want to kick it up with a Briggs and Stratton engine, and I wouldn't do that. So, <laughs> so no, you, no. You, you never know how you can make it a little bit better. Final thoughts, though. What, what do you want people to know this morning? Uh, what I want people to know is is that the folks from Mississippi Department of Health and, and, and your partners the state agency are, are, are watching this on, literally on an hour-by-hour hour basis, if not a minute-by-minute minute basis. Um, I, but I cannot reiterate enough to the people of Mississippi to, to please, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm really trying to reiterate, please um, be disciplined with the shelter at home order. I know that it's inconvenient. People want to be outside. They want to go and do stuff. To the best that you can, please adhere yeah. to that shelter home uh, order that was put in place and that will run out through Monday uh, the 20th. It's extremely important that we adhere to that to, to flatten this curve that has been said many times before. We want, yeah. we want to get through. Greg, thank you, man. We, we appreciate you so very much. You can't say it enough. We thank you so very much. Greg yeah, Michelle, Executive Director of MEMA. I would look at it this way when you stick your head out the door. This virus is a sniper. Back with more.